Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing Raphael. And while this is actually not anything to do with the Ninja Turtles, it is still as exciting. This will be based on the Zen 4 microprocessor architecture and produced on TSMC's 5NM process and will also be on the AM5 platform, which brings shinies such as DDR5 memory support. However, Raphael is going to also break the mold that we've seen with Ryzen processors up until this point. So essentially what AMD have done is have two series of desktop processors. I'm simplifying things here, of course, and we're going to discount products such as Threadripper. So in the mainstream, we have the CPU only offerings, for example, let's say the 7950X, but then AMD also have a various offerings which are APUs, which obviously are CPU and a GPU combination, which might be based, for example, on the Vega IP. This means, however, that you have a core count deficit for the APUs, so you might only have, say, eight cores, 16 threads with an, uh, with an uh, GPU, whereas, again, if you want a CPU-only offering, well, then, of course, you've got, for example, 16 cores, 32 threads on the 5950X. And this has been a strategy that AMD have employed for some time now. This is very different from Intel's strategy with offerings such as the 11900K, of course, actually having an iGPU. And this definitely does have some benefits, not least of which is that let's say your GPU breaks or you're RMAing it, or perhaps you're waiting to buy a new one or whatever, you're not totally SOL in the meanwhile. So what on earth then is going to change with AMD? Well, with Raphael, allegedly we will have a Zen 4 based processor cores. However, despite the fact that it's a mainstream processor, it will also include Narve 2X IP. This information actually was originally hinted back in August of 2020 when a roadmap popped up from a user by the name of Mibu. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. But their roadmap was actually missing a very important piece, which is Raphael, which is what, of course, we're talking about here. This information, though, comes from Set P. I'm not sure how you pronounce that last part of their name. However, according to this information, well, you can read it yourself. Zen 4, 5 and M a Narve 2 based IP. So RDNA 2 will be uh, actually incorporated into mainstream desktop processors, which brings several questions to the table. The first and most obvious is what AMD will do for future APUs as we get further and further into their product roadmap. The second question is what about core counts and what will happen in terms of the chiplets of the actual CPUs themselves? I've discussed several times in the past that while you know it was being considered to increase the core count for uh, AMD's future desktop processors, it was not really set in stone. And you know even what we're seeing with uh, Intel, for example, they're not increasing the core count, and AMD just doesn't feel the need to do so. In the mainstream, 16 cores, 32 threads is honestly more than adequate. And while it had been considered, yeah, there just isn't really any need, I don't think, for Intel um, or AMD to increase core counts at the moment for mainstream. So I suspect what we'll see is, uh, let's say, the 7950X, I assume. I suspect it's still going to be based on 16 cores, 32 threads, but obviously with major IPC gains and other changes as well. And furthermore, there's another small update that I'd like to uh, kind of bring your attention to. Another user by the name of Ulrich29, I'll of course link all of this stuff in the video description, they actually compiled a kind of, I uh, suppose you could say like a complete picture of the roadmap. These are based on leaks, so his information could be wrong. But um, Warhol is being listed here, and it says that it's based on the 6NM process and on the AM4 platform. And I've actually had a number of people message me asking my opinion about Warhol, if it will be on uh, AM4, and I think it probably will be. Although I also want to rein in people's expectations a little bit. I don't think Warhol is going to be a significant leap forward. If you're a power user and you, you know, just upgrade every single time because it's a new shiny processor, then of course you might want to grab it. But if you're already using, let's say, a 5900X, for example, and you're quite happy with the performance, I would probably imagine, and again, I could be wrong, but just based on what I'm hearing, you might just want to let it rock and wait until AM5 and, you know, the entire new processor architecture. So I'm hearing it's probably got 5, maybe 10% IPC gain and perhaps a modest clock frequency bump, but it's not going to be anything significant. My gut feeling is that 
AMD are simply releasing this as kind of an easy offering uh, to the market because they know they will be facing off against older link. So they probably feel like this modest IPC bump, clock frequency bump will help, you know, fend off older link. And I really hope for Intel's sake that older Lake is really good because yeah, Rocket Lake has had somewhat of a mixed reception. I think that, you know, the 11900K has gotten kind of a kicking both on social media as well as in reviews. However, there are certain offerings like the 11400, which seem to have been received more favorably. Um, but in my opinion, anyway, if um, we kind of find out that Alder Lake is a disappointment, it's going to be like, you know, a game of Mortal Kombat. It's going to be like, finish him, flawless victory, fatality. And um, yeah, it's going to be Intel that are the ones that are laying on the ground with their head removed or something. Uh, but anyway, again, this is a significant change in AMD's strategy with uh, Raphael and I'm very curious to see how this kind of impacts things going forward particularly in the chiplet design uh, at the moment I'm very ignorant in that I wonder if we're going to see um, the iGPU literally incorporated directly into the CPU chiplet or whether it's going to be entirely separate I'm going to guess it might be separate but again I'm speaking in ignorance there and now something I find really interesting, and that is that Sony themselves might actually be working on their own variant of Game Pass. And this was actually originally hinted at by uh, the creator of God of War, David Jeff. And he basically said that he believes that Sony are almost certainly working on their own version of Game Pass, though of course he's not providing any details yet exactly how it's going to work. And I have to admit, I initially kind of wrote this off and then a number of you on twitter actually reminded me that well no even jim ryan has actually hinted that this might be the case going forward and i'm very curious to see how sony actually approach a game pass like strategy for their console and i think that you know microsoft apparently have around 18 to 20 million users at the moment for game pass and obviously game pass is also not only for console but also pc i myself actually have game pass simply because even though I actually was given a review code for a couple of games, I think Gears of War and uh, Halo, maybe? I don't remember. But yeah, I was given a couple of review codes, but even I have Game Pass just because it's bloody simple. Um, and yeah, I, I think that Game Pass is a, is a really popular thing at the moment on Xbox, and I think Sony kind of pushing it on their own console does make a measure of sense. And, you know, at the moment, um, I don't necessarily know... Um, what Microsoft's long-term strategy is. I, I think they're at the moment obviously hoping that Game Pass hits a critical mass. And there is a lot of discussion at the moment going into the industry, like how profitable Game Pass is, because obviously at the end of the day, Microsoft are coughing up a lot of money for games to be on Game Pass. And furthermore, you know, you add in such things as like deals where you can get like Game Pass for like a dollar a month. And you know, that, that offer seems to be coming and going on. So you don't know if it's a thing at the moment. And obviously people are just kind of loading up buying months worth of Game Pass. So you might have like, you know, two years of Game Pass or whatever for a very small amount of money, like, you know, $24 basically. So clearly that is not, you know, as profitable for Microsoft. And they probably have, you know, a lot of stuff on their mind, like how many users do we need? What's the kind of the retention rates we need for our users and so on. And this is obviously a lot of uh, information for Sony to take on board as well. But in my personal opinion, I do feel that, Game Pass is kind of like Microsoft's strategy going into the, into the consoles because they know that um, at the end of the day, it's a lot of mindshare. And uh, I think that, you know, they kind of have this idea of you playing games on like, let's say xCloud or whatever, on pretty much anything like they honestly do not care if you're playing on the fridge. And I mean, there's even a lot of rumors at the moment that Microsoft themselves are going to be working on something with Nintendo. There's a ton of rumors uh, you know, kind of circulating uh, with Microsoft and Sony are not a dumb company. They kind of know that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we don't exactly know what's going to happen with future iterations of hardware. Obviously, Sony and Microsoft are both probably testing stuff internally at the moment and trying to figure out what shape a next generation console will look like. Um, but how many more physical consoles will we get? I mean, personally speaking, and this is my own personal preference, I personally prefer you know physical based consoles i love owning a playstation or an xbox or whatever and i'm also a pc gamer too um 
However, the industry itself is going to be changing significantly and it's hard to deny that cloud and other such offerings are going to be really kind of, um, yeah, they're going to grow in popularity. So I'm interested to hear your opinions down below actually. A, what do you think of uh, console generations? How many more physical console generations do, are we going to be getting? Are we going to be getting one more physical console generation? Is this the last console generation? And the second thing, do you think uh, Microsoft will be alone in Game Pass or do you think that Sony will also put out their own offering as well? And if they do put out their own offering, what's it going to look like? Is it going to be like their first party studio games only? Are they going to kind of go third party? You know, what, what do you think? With that said though, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, then of course you know what to do because it's YouTube land. You click the like button and I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.